I want to quickly talk about is Bergheim revealing their New Year's Eve events that are going to be happening for the, what is it, three days or something? It's absolutely crazy bonanza. So this is called the Sylvester Club Night, which is Club Night 2022, courtesy of RA. It says features dozens of acts across four rooms in New Year's Eve event that will run from December 30th through to January 2nd. So it's going to be an absolute blockbuster. For me, first of all, I don't think this is going to be possible to do this year. I really would want to go one year and do the whole event from the start to the finish. It's absolutely one my dream to do so, but it's probably going to have to wait another year for that to absolutely make you make sense. But from what I've heard, it's absolutely barnstormingly busy. And most events are like that. I think the one coming up in two weeks, which is the 18th birthday, is going to be absolutely ram jam. So there's two scenarios. Either you go to these type of events just to say you've gone feel the vibe of it being super busy and touristy and full of locals and stuff and just rammed from beginning to end or the other kind of little heads up to to note with these sort of things is usually the couple of weeks after a big event are usually the best times to go to Bergheim they're usually empty all the tourists have left it's usually full of locals or regulars whatever they like to be to be referred as and the vibe is just perfect I've been a couple of times before that I've been like the first weekend um, that it ran after New Year's Eve because I think they closed for a little bit they have a little bit of a rest and relaxation. They probably spring clean the entire place and get it back to spick and span. But I think they closed. I don't know if a couple of weeks or one week. But I remember going a, a week. They opened or reopened after New Year's Eve. And it was absolutely slamming. And I went in a couple of times after they did like a Easter or May Day event also. That was really, really fun. So it's twofold. But if you haven't been before, then probably it's nice to kind of just go and see it full at full tilt. Because that really works. But the queues will be astronomical. And sometimes as well, the things about the busy events is that they've reached capacity. So, um, you know, it doesn't matter how long you queue. Sometimes if it's full, it's full. And sometimes you can't get in for like four hours. And that's happened to me last time when I went to the, I went to the makeup one. I went to the one that did for the, for 2021. So that was early in the month, early in the year. That might have been like June or something. And that was a rammed and I had to wait outside. That's the longest I've ever waited in the Burkhan queue. That must have been like four hours waiting outside. It was horrendous. Having bare people try and line cut, which didn't work with me. I was doing mad. Oi, get to the back, taps on the shoulder. I wasn't having it, mate. Not in the slightest, especially after waiting four hours. Fair enough if it's like, you know, you're near the front and stuff, where maybe people are meeting up their friends, cool, but just going in there and not saying anything is a bit out of order to be honest for the most part but hey let's continue with the article they guys announced the lineup for the new year's eve club so that's the club night um the berlin's annual new year's eve marathon is one of the most popular parties running from the 30th of january through the second this year's event will feature dozens of acts split across four spaces panorama bar uh Berghain, um, whatever that word is their saloon and the xxx floor which i think is a floor named renamed um for laboratory if i'm not mistaken that's the one that's usually the gay only night that happens sporadically here or there um but it's really popular as well and it's one of my favorite rooms to be fair it says highlights in Bergheim include ra cover star helen the health sir steffi ben clock dj nobu legend jacko jacko rad had tasha avalon emerson if ok williams paramita ryan elliott dj holographic and more playing a panorama bar that's a splendid lineup of panorama bar to be honest and um, the energy will be a uh, downbeat for the salon it's featuring space africa tobias marcus Sh marco shuttle rabib biani who also play uh, live and uh, xxx floor on the other hand will feature boris cormac lakuti sound streaming tamo sumo before the sylvester burger will also celebrate his 18th birthday weekend of december as you can see here david El El has say david eli milik uh, Mary Moxamia, who's one of my favorite new discoveries, seen a couple a couple of times. This lady is absolutely boss. Partook Roy Perez, who I've always been a big fan of a Panorama Bar on Christmas Day at the end of 2022. Bergheim is closing his world renowned agency. You already know that. So let's have a look at the lineup and what it's looking like. It looks tasty. So obviously here you've got, it's running from the 3rd of December all the way until Monday. That is flipping nuts, to be honest. That is a real solid session to be a part of. I don't know how you guys are going to handle it. If you've been there, I'm really curious to know if there are people who've ever actually gone there and done the entire thing without leaving. I'm sure there are people that have done that for sure. 
um i would love to know if how what that is and what that feels like when you come out and you're all delirious and stuff and you come out on the second you go on the 30th and you come out on monday the second like what does that actually feel like i remember the the last time i've ever done that might have been like 2017 2016 where i've left when it closes where they close but i mean when you all come out together and it's like 10 a.m in the morning on a monday and it's a bit of a trip you're all delirious and like you know in a bit of a loop and everyone rushes to the train station that's awesome awesome but the lineup is really really nice for for bike and obviously you got all the regular suspect that you would assume there you got diary who a lot of people are not really big fans of it feels like nowadays feel like there's a bit of nepotism involved with her getting slots there the ben clock that i'm a big fan of dj nobu japanese absolute legend how who i really have a big time for helena how who i'd love to see play live in there who i think would be awesome playing that kind of um platform especially given new year's eve the way she plays her style and stuff will be absolutely fantastic face for tab obviously got not nothing but good things to say about him steffi and virginia and tasha great but p bar for me is the best lineup so far avalon emerson bashka hot dj holographic um up and coming detroit flipping legend here fidel fka dot m4a that'd be really fun gabriel kuateng also i'm a big fan of massimiliano Pellegrini. Allegri also I'm a big fan of Auto and Atinati Sears, a uh, resident there, and Bao Camo is also really awesome and really nice. He's one person I did bump into say hi one time at P Bar and he was really nice and personable. Paramida, Roy Perez, Steffi, and um who else is there? Soundstream, is it? Oh, that's all. No, that's one P Bar and an Exercise floor. <laughs> this is my favorite room, by the way. Um this is my favorite. And I think that I have some itch pictures here that show the inside because this might be my favorite room because I've only discovered it recently. So when I went in June for that makeup session for the Sylvester that meant to happen in twenty twenty for twenty twenty one obviously because of the pandemic it didn't happen so they had one in the middle of the year which was a bit weird but they did it anyway and it was really really fun it was the first time i ever has been exposed to the xxx floor because this is usually only reserved for the laboratory nights which are usually their gay only nights and let me tell you the architecture for that place is awesome obviously you got this you know this is from the architectural firm that designed the interior of Berghain. but then to show you what flipping that room looks like you've got some pictures here courtesy of flipping google that show you a bit of it that kind of give you an idea of what it looks like so you've got all these flipping you know crazy um seats and stuff as you can see yeah right it's made for being naughty and getting up to all sorts of perverse things as you can see there on that text right but what i loved about it is the dj booth and what that looks like because as you can see here i think there's a picture from a lady gaga set i guess right we played there maybe one time these are little stairs that lead up into the little cage where the DJ plays. And I think it's here, you see in the picture there. There's a little picture there with like a fence and that's where the DJs are. So it's kind of like a stairs you go up to, you turn right and the booth's right in there where they play. So they're kind of playing down to you and it's an absolutely phenomenal room. Oh, you see Daily Gaga there actually. That's awesome. She played at laboratory back in the day. Absolute legend. So that is one of my favorite rooms that I've recently discovered That's a real, real vibe. And then they have people dancing on the flipping um bar as well it kind of reminds me of a scene of some kind of dystopian movie where people are dancing and rocking out and having a great time it's honestly one of the best the logo is really nice also i think that was a nice logo to put on a t-shirt i think sure they've got merch i'm pretty sure they've got merch on merch with this logo on the burkine store that he actually purchased i'm pretty sure but i like the logo of it i think that looks fresh to death and then obviously you can see some pictures of it also but that room for me was one of my favorites and one of my best recent discoveries that i've ever had of going to the flipping burger which i've been going to for a very very long time but i thought that was one of my best and most favorite recent discoveries let's see if i can find any more pictures from this event because this is really really cool to see if there's any more things that can be taken from it because that that little section inside of there was absolutely beautiful to check out so i guess this is for what was this for an event this is atmosphere for celebrating the private after show party for monster ball tour. Okay, cool. At uh, Gigo, this is 2010. Lady Gaga event at Panama. Oh my God, look at these ladies in blackface. That's a bit wild, isn't it? That's a bit wild. <laughs> that's a picture you don't want to go viral again. But look at these haircuts from back in the day. Do you remember that? That's a that's a jacket that everyone used to wear back in the day. That was a very cool look in the indie scene. This kind of um, what would you call it? This kind of admiral captain's kind of jacket thing, the ironic pins, the big scarf, the bleach blonde hairs. Oh my god, this is definitely a moment back in the day. That looks like somebody I recognize, isn't it? Who, who is this? It looks like an artist or somebody. I forgot who that is. It looks somebody familiar. Lady Gaga looking absolutely incredible. Always a moment in terms of her outfits and makeup. 
Love that. What do we see here also? Maybe there's some icons as well just starting here that we're not aware of that maybe still around. Oh, look, she's got the... I remember I had that jacket. Do you remember that jacket? That's from back in the day from Pata. The varsity jacket that they made to tie with their flipping Air Maxes that I sold. I had two pairs of Air Maxes. Let's see if I can find a look at them. Pata, Nike, Air Max. It was the first one. It was like a plush brown type of one. And I sold mine for, I think, for like a thousand back in the day. Let's see if I can find them. This one, yeah, that's the one. The para. I think it's a para pattern, right? So yeah, see what <gasps> they're going for twelve thousand now. Oh my god, para. Let's see. Jesus Christos. I forgot which one I had. I think I had these ones. I don't think I had a friends and family one for sure. I didn't have the friends and family, but I do remember having these and selling them. They're going for twelve k now. Well, I sold mine for a thousand, so I probably got <laughs> I probably got ripped off by for the most part, as you can see. I probably got ripped off, but yeah, I had those. So that was a matching jacket that went with that, and then you got some pictures of somebody performing there, as you can see, leading up to the stairs. You got a picture with somebody who's this? That's Palina Ron. I don't know who this is. Who's Palina Ronjinski? Let's see who this lady is. I have no idea who this person is. Let's see if they're still around doing some things. This is a Russian television presenter. Okay, cool. Russian German television presenter. She's still about now doing good things. So big up her. And then who's the guy next to her? This is Sven Kittler Lauder. Kill two Lauder or something. I don't know who that is. Let's see who this is. Is it a money man? Oh yeah, some sort of playboy money man. I guess they were in a relationship, I guess, probably. Senior director, creator, and public figure. So I guess maybe they're in a relationship, right? This, these people, I'm assuming. Maybe they are, maybe they're not, who knows. But yeah, what an amazing time capture to look back on, isn't it? Posh performing there. There you go, I got DJing in laboratory in 2010 in Bergheim. Pretty and cool, isn't it? But yeah, for the most part, that's the stairs you can stand up. And I guess the reason why I bring this up in laboratory is that this is why I saw Pablo Boozy play for the first time and absolutely tear that place apart. So I can't wait to see that guy DJ again. He was absolutely amazing. But yeah, look, that XXX room... Oh, the laboratory is probably one of my favorite spaces in that place. Um, this blackface sort of stuff is absolutely incredible. <laughs> I guess it's mud, maybe. It's, but I don't know what it is, but this is absolutely hilarious. Uh, there's some guy from Semi Precious Weapons. Who's Justin? Who the hell is that? Well, where are all these people now? I wonder. Justin Semi Precious Weapons. Is still about? Yeah, I guess he is Justin. Was it was? Or did he pass away? What happened to him? Okay, the members of the band. Who's the Messi? Okay, his name. Okay, because it's got Justin Trainter. I think he's probably still around, right? Same person was a, was a band. Is Justin Trainter still about? Yeah, he looks like he is. Justin Trainter is an American songwriter, frequently collaborating with Julia Michaels. He's written songs for Britney Spears, Gwen Stefani, and Linkin Park. Bloody hell, pretty cool, man. What a time capsule to see what these people wearing. This what t shirt and covering themselves in mud maybe it's part of the monster album i'm not really too sure but yeah big up flipping big up her in it big up her hanging out doing the thing having an absolute ballast of the time what was this celebrating the muscle tight gay club bird and bird let's see if they got it do we have any more pictures of here from berg let's see if we've got more here that we can check out from a e d t because i'm surprised they even let people take pictures here it's in 2011 pictures featuring Sven. Look at that. That's a time capsule, isn't it? From back in the day. I guess it's an art gallery thing, so it makes it a bit different. So you do get pictures of the place outside of it being a club, which is pretty cool to see. But apart from that, it's not really that time at all in the slightest. Damn. And then the other ones we have here. Exhibition. We have a Levi's party. From 2011, Lady Gaga event. Another one with Sven. More Lady Gaga events there. Bloody hell, we have an Elon Musk event here. I guess it's during lockdown, probably, I imagine so. But yeah, absolutely crazy, crazy, crazy amount of events. But this New Year's Eve event's going to be flipping crazy. XSX floor with Boris, you know, probably worth already. It's waiting gold. Cormac one of my favorite again recent or semi-recent discoveries in terms of disco type music absolute monster when it comes to playing that sort of stuff so definitely check this guy out if you haven't already 
Where's he playing in the UK next? Oh, he's not playing in London for a while, isn't it? Until February of next year. Bummer. Uh, Origins alongside Cormac, Chris Cruz. So him and Chris Cruz. So I wonder who's who are they. Who are they? Uh, who's their booking agency? Show booking info. Temporary secretary because I'd imagine because he's always I see I see flipping Cormac always on the same lineup. Says um, what's his face? Chris Cruz. So I'd imagine they're probably part of the same team. But again, there's some pictures of the inside of Burger. If you want to check that out, also these are pretty cool. You can check that from an architectural firm that does it. Obviously, doesn't really be being there in person. Of course, this is temporary secretary. Let's see who they've got on their lineup. Is it gonna make open my email? Please open my email. Please don't be that site does that stuff. Okay, I see artists. Let's see who they've got. Yeah, see they've got um, is Cormac on there? Yeah, Cormac is on there. So it's the same. They've got the same uh agency, I guess. No, there's no Chris Cruz. I can't see him, but I don't know. Maybe this doesn't matter. So who they got on here right now? Oh, they got Dixon. <sighs> Jimmy Jules, Arm, of course, Dennis Horvat, Holographic, Tennis, Jennifer Cardini, Gerd Janssen. Okay, These are, they're part of um, Temporary Secretary. This is definitely the, the roster that I want to be a part of. Really? DJ Fuckoff is on there too. Wow, big, big up her. That's a good look. That's an amazing look. Big up to her. Very, very nice. Howling, we love to shine. Who else is on there? Also, to double check before I go back to the lineup. Nico Stoja, I'm not too sure. Roman Flugel, Tur, Tricks, and Tess. Okay, really, really splendid. That's a fucking decent list of people. Though, let's be um, let's be for real though. Let's not even muck around. That's a really decent list. But yeah, let's go back to the lineup for that before we end here. We've got that. We've got Lakuti, of course. Nemo, Peach, Peach on No Fuzz. So I'm not really too Peach on No Fuzz. So I'm not really too um familiar with sound stream would be absolutely amazing in that room tamasuma and valley budina but yeah this will be an absolute bounce on an event probably end up going to be 40 euros i'm assuming 50 euros maybe entry re-entry maybe about 20 for the most part probably same as before or maybe more i'm not too sure but it'll definitely be worth worth it's weight in gold if you haven't been already definitely definitely worth its weight in gold 